Federal government makes a U-turn, restrict airlines coming from Canada, United Kingdom and Saudi Arabia into Nigeria. What effect from Tuesday? As federal reviews implementation of MOU as to, to decide on strike by Wednesday. Pressure mounts as President Mohamed Buhari reportedly returns Electoral Act Amendment Bill. And we will be reviewing the dailies as always with an analyst to analyze them. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin. Akadonye. And I am Messi Bopo. It's good to be back on your screen this Monday morning. Yeah, we trust you had yourselves uh, arrested the uh, weekend. Uh, we'll begin, as always, uh, with uh, top trend, and uh, basically, which is uh, you know issues and um, stories uh, that are just uh, making the rant across uh, various uh, you know social media platforms, and of course, uh, making uh, topical uh, uh, you know conversations um, around the world. And um, one of the issues that actually caught my attention over the weekend is the COVID-19 and uh, from what we hear, you know, there are talks about uh, expired uh, COVID-19 in Nigeria. You know, the federal government has actually come out to say that most, uh, some of the donated uh, uh, vaccines under the COVAX uh, program, you know, actually had, uh, you know, short uh, shelf uh, lives. It's as though uh, the COVID-19 uh, vaccines that were sent to us you know, under the COVAX uh, you know, program were almost like dumped on us. What's, what's your reaction, really? Well, you know that, uh, first of all, uh, third world countries, we still have Nigeria, part of it, African as a continent, as, you know, dumping ground for anything by the Western world. So I'm not surprised. We also need to understand the fact that we are not uh, producers of this vaccine. So anything can actually happen. The fact that we're depending, we're dependent, highly dependent on, you know, the powerful countries, rich and mighty countries to produce this vaccine and then send it to us, the handouts. So you can actually expect that uh, you would also have this the tendency to have vaccines being sent because at the end of the day, we have constantly complained about not having enough vaccine. And we had an expert, you know, uh, the commissioner for health, who actually put us through the entire saying that right now we do not have enough vaccines. We're looking at what's the population of the entire you know country over 211 million persons, and how many, uh, how much of the vaccines do we have available? So yes, that's on one hand, because if you remember, these countries would probably have to produce enough for themselves. And when they produce, they would have to send to the, the countries that they probably would categorize as A-list countries before thinking about others. And Nigeria, Africa would come as others. So yes, there's a tendency that that would come through. Now, do you also remember that when we had the first dose that came in March, we didn't have all of this uh, vaccine going to expire. You also want to look at the issue of the bureaucracy, uh, the entire process before it's been shipped in. All of this actually works with time. So the time of, you know, filing and documentation and having it been shipped into Nigeria and arriving is also another factor. So, yes, um, there are a lot of issues surrounding the fact that we have about one million or there are about or over one million doses of expired vaccine in Nigeria, which is an entire waste, if you ask me, mm -hmm. because we have actually waste money. Uh, if... I mean, and if and if we were saying that it was just really charity that they donated that to us, we didn't have to pay from, you know, the coffers of the Federation accounts. So on the other hand, so you look at the entire process and procedure of trying to get the vaccine down to Nigeria, that's on the one hand. And also look at, uh, on the other hand, the fact that Africa as a continent and Nigeria is a dump, has always been a dumping ground. So yes, that's also on the other hand. Mm -hmm. And you also want to look at another factor. Now, you know that vaccine um, hesitancy or COVID-19 misinformation is such a huge deal. A lot of persons have not been vaccinated, not necessarily because, yes, we understand that the vaccines are not really enough. But on the other hand, a lot of people have some conspiracy theory and misinformation surrounding the vaccine. So on that other hand, it is also dependent on the Ministry of Information and Orientation. Mm -hmm. And I constantly ask myself, across the entire country, we do have all of these ministries. Salaries are being gotten. 
what effort? Because I haven't seen what we ought to see a lot of advocacy, government pushing all of the campaigns, advocacy to ensure that we disabuse all of the misinformation surrounding COVID-19 and, of course, the vaccine itself. So we, we haven't really done so much. No, we haven't. And the issues uh, for me right now, you know, it is really alarming that we're talking about uh, not less than one million um, doses of COVID-19 vaccine in a time when the federal government is also uh, talking about giving some people, you know, booster shots. So then again, I'm saying, I'm thinking that <laughs> I'm sorry, we don't Alex. have enough vaccines to go around for some people who have not even gotten the first doses, you know, and uh, even second dose. So next thing you're thinking of a um, booster shot. So how do you match all of this, you know, you have expired uh, COVID-19 vaccines just in front of you. Did, weren't there enough plannings before that? You talked about uh, delays and shipment and all of that. My problem is that uh, you should factor in, you know, time, you know, getting this uh, vaccines into the country, you know, check the, the shelf life of the vaccine. I know exactly how to go about it. And then again, you are actually, you know, saying that uh, uh, civil servants who have not been vaccinated, you know, should not be allowed entry into workplaces. I just don't get how it works when you don't, you've not made enough provision to ensure that uh, the average Nigerian gets vaccinated. On top of that, you have issues of um, COVID-19, you know, uh, I mean, vac uh, vaccines that almost expire. Why would you think some people will not even want to get vaccinated when they hear all of, all, all of these issues of uh, uh, the vaccines that we have in the country, they expire? Though, uh, don't you think I might get affected? I might get one form of disease? Some people are not even well-educated concerning all of this. So, you know, so, now so, we so, have this on our table. So, you know, the, you know uh, on the other hand, I mean, generally, we have a big issue of trust. Mm. There's trust deficit. I guess. And that's why every time you have... Um, government coming out with policies, government making statements and what have you, uh, people take it with a pinch of salt. They do. Now, I'm thinking that since we actually had the outbreak of this virus, uh, that's COVID-19, we probably would have been on top of our toes. Serious advocacy. I'm saying serious one. Because for every time you have a misinformation, you will need a very strong information to counter your existing it's a, it's a thought pattern. So you probably need to push something out to change the narrative. And so you know that what people constantly hear, uh, what you constantly listen to, what you constantly hear over time would form a belief system. Mm -hmm. So we need to find a way to change, and that's solely on government. Yes, I'm not going to say as much as I would give you know, government the, the, the bulk of the game. And that's why you have the Ministry of Information and Orientation. And I, I constantly ask myself, how much of this advocacy have we carried out? Not necessarily, you know, uh, we, we would also say, yes, the urban centers and the rural community. We haven't done enough. So that's also a case because you also have vaccines that you have, you've gotten that are not even enough. And then you have not been able to convince people to get it. Then you begin to use the false approach and saying, oh, if you don't get it and all of that. We also had people reacting saying, uh, we got that vaccine in November. And some other persons are saying the first dose that we got were also told that the vaccine would have expired. Uh, you're also in the same November. So we cannot be careless about all of these things. But Justin, as much as we're highly dependent on, uh, you know, the Western world for vaccine, all of this is expected. Yeah. You can't because it might just be a week to it and then they push it down to you. What would you do? You're not going to bid even if we, even with your money. That's the point. Because so so, really so 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 it, it brings us back to that conversation where we constantly say, for how long will you know Africa as a continent and Nigeria constantly depend on the Western world? Don't don't we have what it that, takes for yeah, us to come to up with a vaccine? Inwards. We have um, virologists, we have scientists. Why are we not really exploring, you know, so that we could actually, over time, not uh, depend on uh, you know handouts and uh, you know things just being dumped on us, so that uh, whatever we see is what we get. No, we, we should move away from that. The conversation right now should be uh, uh, let's uh, what, what investment are we putting towards research and development into creating our own vaccine, so that way we would know that uh, whatever we're consuming is made from us, and we are. Uh, you know, show of, uh, of the authenticity and all of that you get. Very correct. Let's move away from that because I don't want to get so, 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 so agitated about that because it actually bugs, you know, me so much. Another story message that is uh, actually trending is, uh, it is funny, you know, this, today is uh, the, what, today is the 13th of the Two days to go. You know, <laughs> it was it's 12 days to Christmas, you know, and uh, about um, 18 days to the end of the year. I know a, lo a lot of people are actually doing um, end of year activities. You know, people are sending hampers, people are sending out. Have you gotten hampers already? Well, I have some. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me, I'm not going to share with you. <laughs> 
<laughs> people are already getting um, Christmas um, gifts. Uh, people are getting bags of rice, um, you know, vegetable oils, and uh, a lot of things that you know come with the season. But the the story right now is that the <laughs> Senate is actually <laughs> someone in the Presidential Amnesty Committee um, program. You know, one they have planned to spend. 100, wait for it, mercy. You know, they're spending a whopping sum of 187 million naira to organize end of year activities. Mercy. So, so everyone's gonna get so, like a cow each or something. Well, so, but first of all, if you, you want to, how, how much? Wait, no, wait, wait, wait. It's mercy, not gonna get to me. Wait, you are getting some cows. Right? Nothing is, net, <laughs> nothing has ever come to my table. I've never gotten anything. All right. So, uh, how much are we looking at again? Uh, 187 million for end of year activities. 187 million. Let's, let's be very realistic. Mm. You know, maybe you need to make some excuse for them. Because if you also look at the cost of goods and services, uh, you know, across, there's been, uh, you know, real, in reality that the price of goods and services has skyrocketed. And you want to agree with me. So maybe uh, that's just enough. But it also reminds me of um, at the time where I was in school and the first class I had to attend, I had a lecturer uh, who asked a question. He said, who can define what an Uwambe government is? So you see, he was asking the question of what is an Owambe government? And that really got to me because in my mind, so I said party, because I know Owambe has to do with party. So Owambe government party. The truth is, as much as I would want to say yes, the cost of, the cost of goods and services is actually on the high. And you want to uh, look at what the value of the Naira is right now that might just be on the right track. But on the other hand, you find out that we spend so much on you know, things that are not very relevant. Uh, that's what I would call it. I'm not saying it's not important for them to actually have end of year spending and what have you. But you see... I'm thinking that if you look at our budgets year in, year in, year, year in, year out, or, you know, on, you find out that we spent so much money on uh, things that are not infrastructural development. So you want to look at the capital uh, uh, budget and, uh, you know, the capital expenditure and the recurrent expenditure. And you find out that we spent so much on the recurrent. And the recurrent would include, you know, the cost of running governance, yeah. administration, paying salaries, and all of the spendings that we have. And all of this does not translate. They would ask you, show me a country that is willing to, show me a country that is headed towards development. And you would see a country that spends a huge chunk of a budget for infrastructure, or that's capital. Yeah. Because at, at the end of the day, it would translate into infrastructures. You would see them. And, you know, business, individual, private, Private sectors would thrive and it would also you know translate into some kind of economic development for everyone but we usually we usually just spend monies on things that are not very relevant so it's okay we're going to eat rice we're going to have chicken and what have you and you're going to have the cows and blah 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 then we get back to the same circle also it's usually the cost i'm not saying there's anything first of all i'm, I'm not saying there's something wrong with all of that but i'm also saying that look at how much we're putting out right so you want to begin to ask yourself instead of you what, what is the what is the salaries what are they earning those who are earning how much is their salaries at this point in time what is the working condition for all of them because instead of having that all of that together i think that we can digest you know push that shift all of that monies and resources, you know, to ensuring that they have a working, better working condition, the road infrastructure is working, life is comfortable, they have access to education, their kids, you know, health infrastructure, and all of that. There will be no need for all of that because you as an individual will be able to cater for buying a bag of rice and salt. I don't yeah, know if you get my point. So, so, so if we take care of, you know, the basic things, the real issues, uh, I'm not sure it would be difficult for any family to say, we can afford rice, we can afford, you know, no, chicken no. and what have you. Not a problem, but it's fine. <laughs> All right, fine. 187 million will be actually following that story, and we'll also bring you details, you know, of how uh, the money is going to be expended, uh, maybe on um, rice, chicken, or free hammers. But then we'll <laughs> let you know as it progresses. Uh, finally, Mercy, uh, we spoke about this uh, sometime last weekend that it is coming up again. Asu uh, so is still decide, you know, their fate or what they would do if we're looking for, uh, you know, uh, at another strike come uh, Wednesday. That's December 15th. You know, last week, uh, the, uh, the ultimatum they gave to the federal government indeed expired, and uh, they said they were going to come up with their position. So but right now, they said they will be decided by December 15. And mercy does not really look good be from all that we have seen, from what we know, from the body language, and from several MOEs uh, being signed, most times uh, 
these agreements are not actually, you know, met. And it's okay to embark on another strike. We will continue in this circle. We'll but constantly you will go be in circle forever. Well, it is not the first time, it's not the second, it's not the third. We haven't thought about the need for our kids not to be at home. So it's not a big deal. I mean, it's no longer a big deal. It has become part of our culture. It has become part of, you know, the educational system in Nigeria. Strike, you must actually anticipate strike. It's a normal for us. And because we're not seeing it as an abnormal, and I tell you that I, you know, the fact that we constantly have to even talk about this on national television, it calls for it triggers me it really triggers me and i would say this it is irresponsible for any party not to respect agreement and over time our government has never respected agreement it is totally wrong we still talk about the fact that we have a problem of huge trust deficit you don't respect agreement it is not responsible government has not leave i do not understand why we're still dragging issues from 2009 with asu up until this point okay so yes Asu would embark on that strike. Well deserved. It's normal. It's something that we have come to live with. As a matter of fact, I think it's part of our culture. Let's constantly enjoy it until we understand the need for us to respect our agreement, the need for us to pay attention to the educational system. Well, I agree that uh, we need to respect agreement, but the federal government should actually do something right now because our education system is actually getting to be in shambles. That is much we will take on um, uh, top trend and we'll go get on a quick break when we return. I'll be going to see what the paper uh, you know about this morning on uh, of the press and we have a public affairs analyst of Punabo in Kotaria who will be joining us in a moment stay with us it's still a breakfast on plus TV Africa